On this episode of the History of the Course podcast with Curtis and Josh, we take a look at the band from the city of brotherly love known as A Life Once Lost. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at IsSurvivedByPro for news and latest episode postings. And make sure to subscribe to the show, leave us a five-star review, and write us a comment on YouTube or whatever podcast service you're using. Make sure to check us out on TikTok and give us a follow at IsSurvivedByProductions. And if you'd like to see us do some live streams, leave us a comment or tweet us the keyword stream. Now, without further ado, let's start the show. The devil is in Atlanta. <laughs> Army surrounded. Can you feel this uproar, festering desire in my thoughts? I can promise you one thing. I will hunt you till you die. Welcome back to the History of the Cores podcast, sponsored by the Church of Seven Drac, where each and every episode, we take a look at the history of a band from the core genre. I'm Curtis, and with me, as always, is my, uh, my cool little co-host over here with the mustache. <laughs> Rocking the stash. Uh-huh. Getting a little getting a little prepared for uh Movember. Yep, I'm already there. Well, he's pre-gaming. He's in preseason mode. That's what it is, man. Yeah, this is this is pre-gaming. Bit. What's going on, Josh? Oh, not much. Uh just you know, spent the day listening to some life once lost. Top ten band? No. Oh, top twenty? Yeah, probably. Okay, top 15? Uh, I'd have to think about it. Top 14? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. They're, they're a good band. They just... They just never really popped. Yeah, to me, I don't least. know. A band like this has a similar sound to Lamb of God. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if you mm-hmm. do sound like that, mm-hmm. and yeah, you're, you're going to be in the shadow. Hidden, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, I had never heard of these guys until I saw them, and that was uh, their third album. Oh, wow. Okay, so you didn't so, see them until Hunter. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that was 05, right? Yeah, 05. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, we'll get into that here in just a moment. Um, the only thing we got uh, before we get into this episode, Josh, is uh, our, our uh, weekly What Did You Listen To uh, this week? Besides the band that we talk about, I'll go ahead and start with uh, with uh, I did like you did last week. I did more of a podcast week. <laughs> besides listening to a life once lost, because I hadn't listened to life once lost in quite a while. I mean, so we're already to go back through. We're already tied down. Some some weeks, it's like you're already committed to listening to at least you know five or six albums, right? 75% it's, of your week is tied to that at least, yeah. Yeah, just listening to what we have to for the show. So some weeks, you know, it just doesn't, you know. It just doesn't you know, work get, out. Yeah, I don't have a yeah. ton of extra time to. Well, what did you, did you listen to anything else besides the Life Once Lost this week, Josh? Um. Yes, so. <laughs> was second... Is this going to be the shortest uh, well, segment <laughs> before before we started i was like god what did i listen to this week i don't even remember yeah. that's i had to go yeah. back and look but i've gotten um, to a point where i have to write it down because sometimes i just like i get to this the end of the week and i'm like yeah what did i i don't even remember what i listened to i don't remember all right so two very different albums here uh, but we've got uh, AFI's "The Art of Drowning" over here. Uh, never heard of that and, one. Yep, yeah, I never heard of that one. That's a, that's a find. Right we didn't. There. We I, we've never listened to that one recently. Yeah, uh, that is. I think I said it in the episode, but that's my favorite AFI album for sure. Yep. It's a good one. Um, and then <laughs> over here, um, 
What, what do I have over there, Curtis? A little uh, blue sky noise from Circuit Survive. That's right. Classic. Um, yeah, best that's album. Just one I like to throw on every now and again for Circuit Survive. I'm afraid I'd... to say yes because I feel like people would crucify me for not saying uh, Juntra. Juntra's a good one, but man, Blue Sky, I feel like they really hit their stride. Yeah. You know, so Juntra's a good one, but for me personally, Blue Sky is my favorite. Yeah. So, and that artwork is just insane. It's ridiculous. You know, um, it's almost like it's like a combination of, well, like, it's unnecessary. Combination. Well, it's like the, the, the person up front, it's like, it makes you kind of think of like, catholic artwork where it's like a saint and it's supposed to have like kind of like the halo around their head basically but instead it's a, a pegasus with sharp teeth coming after him i don't know yeah it's really weird it's very it's strange like a, uh, it's it's kind of a pegasus is there something the, riding on it too the head i can't be. i can't tell no the, the head, head is, is like, like a yeah. fucking sandworm or something <laughs> yeah that's true like uh what was the movie with kevin bacon tremors that terrible movie tremors yeah. <laughs> yeah i love how you went to tremors i was thinking dune but <laughs> love how you Is went he to in tremors. Dune? kevin bacon yeah no oh okay. okay but they both have sandworms okay no no i got you yeah. i think you meant you went to dune when <laughs> when i said kevin bacon Oh god, I can't imagine Kevin yeah. Bacon in Dune. He might be, dude. He may be a cameo coming up. I don't no. know. No. <laughs> all righty, man. Cool. Uh, all right. Let's shut up and talk a little bit about the band known as A Life Once Lost, Josh. Okay, so genre-wise, uh, they are categorized under metalcore, groove metal, and gent. I can see the first two. What about, what do you think about gent? I'm going to say I'm going to say gent light. Okay. Gent light. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Um do you want to talk about now or do you want to wait till the Hunter album to talk about when you saw them? Um we can talk about it now. It doesn't really okay. matter. Cuz like um, you said you never you never heard of them before until that moment. So what was yeah. your impression of them? I'd never heard of them, and this is kind of like a weird show. So I've talked about the show before when we did Norma Jean, okay. um, and probably the Chariot too. But oh, Norm- that's right. I forgot. I forgot they were all there. Okay. Yeah. So Norma Jean yeah. and the Chariot were playing together. Yeah. And they were like the headliners, and the two bands that opened were um, Handshake Murders, Handshake Murders, who played yep. first, and A Life Once Lost. Um, I'm sure we'll do some little short, just kind of fun episode about handshake murders. As little as there is to talk about this band's history, there's probably a sentence or two out there about the handshake murders. Yeah. Um, but definitely worth a listen. There's only like one album and then an EP, I think. Okay. But the Usurper album is Chef's Kiss. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Delicious. Um but Handshake Murders came out, and I, w- I was shocked by these these two opening bands. Handshake Murders, because the guy's vocals were so raw, and then immediately, like, okay, so up until they played, as they were setting up, he was just ripping cigs, like, just one after another after another. I thought, surely this guy's a tech. Like, I don't see him out there, like, really messing with any of the instruments, but he's getting some stuff set up. And uh, no, no wonder they he, only had one album. He picked up the mic and uh, went to town. Then afterwards, as quick as he was done, he put that mic down and lit up another sing. And uh, it had been too long. Like, wow. <laughs> brutal. Brutal. Um, the entire time Handshake Murders was playing, there was a guy in front of me on um part of the pa and he was like facing the crowd and he wasn't like really like up there against the band he was like just off enough and was just kind of rocking out the dude who is behind you now um 
looked a lot different uh, than he does there. He had Just really long yeah. hair, um, okay. probably about shoulder length hair, really greasy. Um, he had on this really dirty old beanie. Um, he had on kind of like an oversized jacket. And I remember his jeans were like super holy and like pretty dirty too. Uh, really scraggly long beard. And I I just thought this guy had kind of like wandered in from outside. It was just like rocking out, you know, he's like up there yeah. facing the crowd, just kind of getting down the whole yeah, time. This is nice. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, who is this guy? You know, I just couldn't figure it out. And then uh, A Life Once Lost started getting all their stuff set up. And next thing I knew, he was up there getting the microphone and he was the vocalist for this next band. Um, But they played a lot of stuff off of Hunter and some off of a great artist. But yeah, I was super blown away. Another one of those shows where a couple of bands that I'd never heard of just blew my mind that night. So, Oof. Man. Great. Terrific. What's their stage present like? Um, pretty good with with both bands. The guitarists are doing a lot of technical stuff. So mm. there's not a ton of moving around from them going on. Yeah. Uh, but a pretty heavy vocal presence. And I remember he, like he was all over the place. Like he was getting up on amps and stuff. Like he was pretty crazy. But who let this homeless man out? <laughs> Crazy, man. Cool, man. Well, this band was formed in 1999 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the city of brotherly love. Not so much. <laughs> I will hunt you till you die. <laughs> <laughs> well, immediately I think of the Philly fanatics. It's like, I mean, they're beating each other up. They're setting their own town on fire when they win games. I mean, you know, it's great. It's terrific. Everybody shows love in different ways, apparently. It's all in so, love. It's all in love, man. Uh, your first official lineup here is Robert Meadows. This guy right here. This homeless man behind me on vocals. Uh, you got Douglas Se uh, Sebelik on guitar, Vadim Tavar on guitar, Richard Arnold on bass, and TJ DeBlois on drums deploys nice yeah um we haven't mentioned it yet but uh five full-length albums one ep uh, a couple of demo tapes here at the beginning uh not much history in between not much to really talk about they just seem like um i don't know they're just not really anything they're a band that exists we're just a band that's here we're live and that's it's really about it. Uh, so I mentioned a couple of demo tapes here, Josh. We're, we're not going to spend too much time. Just want to kind of mention them. So they released one in, well, they released both these in 1999. Uh, both were self-released. Um, the first one had songs on it, including Disease, Summer Sky, Winter Air, A Falls, River Farewell, His Kiss of Death, and Why Do You Make Me Bleed. Now, both Why Do You Make Me Bleed and correct? Yeah, Falls River Farewell um, would end up showing on their first full-length album. Everything else is kind of being blown to the wayside here. Uh, shortly after that, they would release a four-track demo uh, in the same year. It's called Four Song Tour Sample. This is more or less to try to get uh, the attention of a, uh, a um, record company so they can get their first full-length out. Uh, songs on this one included Joan said, please, this is what she calls home just before his crucifixion. And why do you make me bleed? Which all four of those are going to be re-recorded and put on their first full length album. Now, with these two demos out there, it caught the attention of a small time label called Robotic Empire, which signed the band. Um, they would release this first one and the first EP. And then that's it. So they just get the first full length and the first EP um, from this record label. Talking about that first full length album, Josh, going right on into this bread sandwich 2000s. Open your mouth for the speechless in case of those appointed to die from robotic empire. What do you think about that? That uh, that title, man, that's pretty cool. 
I like the title. I do like the title. Yeah. I like the art also. Yes, the art's pretty cool too. Um, I had really hoped that the year on this that I saw was wrong. Um, mm-hmm. because you probably, you probably saw the uh, 2004 edition. Yes. So I yeah. listened to the fourth plague flies, a great mm-hmm. artist, and then listened to this and was like, wait, what? Yeah, <laughs> like, I was really confused. I was like, they've got to have the years they went wrong backwards. on this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was reissued in 2004 with improved mixing and mastering work, um, all new artwork, bonus tracks, and much more um, produced hate, by Vince. Go ahead. I hate to say this. What, who, uh, what did it sound like on the first one? Because I don't know, because this I, one does one not sound to, good. Yeah. The one I listened to was 2004's. Cause that's the only one I could find, but, and I, I thought the same thing too. I was like, mm, I don't know if I want to hear the 2000 version. Ugh. Yeah. This yeah. sounds very bad. Was it, uh, was it, yeah, it was, uh, Zayo. What was the very first album? The, uh, all else failed. Um, the only version I could find was the, uh, reissued version or re no remastered version from like 2000 and something, 2014, 15, um, it's still it wasn't the one that they re-recorded with um Dan on vocals. Um it was, you know, all the original people was just remastered and everything. And that one sounded uh, it sounded pretty good, but you could still was tell it was kind of rough. And I remember listening to that and thinking, Ugh, I don't know if I want to listen to the original version, man, because <laughs> this is pretty raw as it gets right here. So yeah, yeah, I thought the same thing that you did with this one. Uh, this album is produced by Vincent Ratty and John Hiltz. This is the only album uh, with Vadim Tever on guitar. Stuart Mason wrote in his review of the album on allmusic.com saying, quote, as a whole, the title makes this sound like it should be the work of yet another, uh, another of those Canadian post-rock bands spun off from Godspeed, you black emperor, in an odd sort of way. There's some of that feeling on this album. The songs fade seamlessly into one another, and there are so many dynamic shifts and time signature change-ups that it helps to keep an eye on the front of the CD player to know when one ends and the next starts. However, except for a few passages of relatively delicacy in linking instrumental tracks like The Introduction and Everything Becomes Still, this is a pulverizing, thrashy metalcore exercise through and through. What's most interesting about the album is the placement of the vocals. Though Robert Meadows' vocal style itself is merely the usual horse barking. I like that. That's an interesting uh, way to describe it there. Uh, his vocals are placed so low in the mix that it's not until the fourth track, Almost Perfect But I Failed, that it's clear that he's singing actual words at all. On much of the album, his vocals sound more like a more like the subhuman cries of a large gorilla. <laughs> wow, uh, this is neither an insult nor a compliment. Incidentally, because the effect adds to the mystery of this ambitious but inscrutable album. End quote. All Thoughts? right, <laughs> some crazy, uh, crazy stuff going on in that review there. Songs on this album include. <laughs> Do you got something to say? No, I don't know what to okay. say. Songs on this album include Joan Said Please, This Is What She Calls Home, The Introduction, Almost Perfect But I Failed, Gentle and Elegant, A Falls River Farewell, Everything Becomes Still, Just Before His Crucifixion, and Why Do You Make Me Bleed. Josh, what do you think about their debut album? Meh. Man, if I yeah, if I had heard this one first, I would have just been like, okay, it's just like another speed band, you know? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know if this. Yeah, this had been the first one. I don't think it would have captured me. But at yeah, the time, I... like you know, and especially Iron Gag, like that's where they really start to sound like Lamb of God. Yes. Yeah. But <laughs> especially at that time, it's like no, nah, I probably. You know, being in the shadow of that. When did Lamb of God start? Uh, like was it in the nineties? Okay, I was I was trying to think about that today, and I just never looked it up because I was thinking too this whole time. I was like, okay, this this band sounds like Lamb of God, 
and they do some work with Randy from Lamb of God in later albums. But um, then I started wondering, I was like, I wonder how far back like that influence goes. Cause like listening to this one, I'm kind of like, mm, okay. I mean, not as, not as much as like their later albums you hear it, you know? Yeah. I don't hate this one. Um, it's just really interesting. I think one of the things I was thinking of when I was reading the review, when he talks about the vocal placement, you know, how he says vocal style is merely uh, is placed so low in the mix that it's not until the fourth track. Uh, that's clear that he's singing actual words. Uh, he must be talking about the original version. Cause I felt like you could hear his vocals fine on the, on the versions that we listened to, which yeah. is the 2004 reissue. Um, a very interesting like choice though, not overall, but just like compared to like what they end up doing with his vocals to do like the, the layered like dueling vocals through a lot of this, this album, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's almost kind of like demonic sounding. I don't know. It's, it's really weird. Yeah. I don't hate it, but I don't like, like it. I don't know. I'm just kind of like, mm, okay. Um, It I seems did... like, it seems like they don't really know exactly what they're trying to go for in right. this album. Um, well, one of the because things there's that a steady was, progression. Yeah, you know? one of the things I was going to say was, you know, you talked about the Lamb of God um, influence. I, you know, with this album, you know, being you know 2000, writing some of it in the late 19 or well 1999, I almost kind of got like a sense of almost kind of like some math rock vibes, and then it made me kind of think of like Dillinger at times. Okay. You know, just and, and I think it kind of goes along with what the the reviewer is saying about the time shifts. Uh, when he says, you know, there are there are so many many dynamic shifts and and time time signature change up change ups. Blah, here we go again, another week, <laughs> or I can't speak. Yeah, I don't know. I just at times I was kind of like mm, I could I, I kind of like sense some stuff there, almost like a Dillinger. Uh, more musically, not not vocally, but just like musically, kind of. Um, yeah, because I don't uh, think the... I don't think in the beginning they were being fueled by Lamb of God, because okay. New American Gospel came out in two thousand. That's their first one, and that one, the sound that Lamb of God rides pretty much their entire career is already being cultivated on this album. It's not an album of like, oh, it's, are we trying to do like some, you know, speed, like math rock stuff or yeah. it's like, no, they've already cultivated that sound. I mean, Black Label is the first song on that album, you know? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think they... I feel like they were looking for a sound and they cultivate it over the next few albums. And by the time you get to Hunter, it is really like fleshed out, you know? Yes. Yeah. He's um, definitely trying to figure out what he wants to do now. You definitely see progression between this one and, uh, well, even the EP, I feel like you see progression, but I mean, definitely between like full links, this one and a great artist. And then, yeah, by the time he gets to Hunter, it's like, okay, he's found his voice. He knows what his style is. Yeah. Um, shoot, there was something else I was going to say. Um, oh, the uh, the bass on this album at times uh, makes me think of, um, is it Les Claypool from, uh, uh, what is that band? It was on Tony, Ho uh, Tony, Tony Hawk, Pro Skater. You know what I'm talking about? No. Okay. Uh, anyway, I'll have to come back to that. Will you but say anyway. Tony Hawk Pro Skater? The first song that comes to my mind is uh, the Here I Am, Doing Everything I Can. That's a good one. Yeah, it's Superman uh, by Goldfinger. That's a good one. Um, oh, it's this the song title of that the one that I'm humming is uh, Jerry was a race car driver. Jerry was a race car driver. He did it, did it, did it, did it. But you never hear the lyrics in the on the actual like game though. It's just it's, the it's instrumental. The final... okay. Yeah. Um. God, what is his band name though? I can never think of. Is it, it is. 
Yeah, Primus. There you go. For some reason, okay. I couldn't think of it. Anyway, um, his style on bass at time, where he's kind of like like picking it, kind of like plop. I don't know what, like what the te- technical term is. It's not slapping. I mean, he does some slapping too. But anyway, my point is, the bass on this album at times made me think of Les Claypool's uh, style on Primus. Um, um, you know what I'm saying? Yes. I might have to go back. Okay. You're not giving me anything with your facial expressions. So I'm just like, does he, does, yeah, he's, he just stone faced. I have no clue if he's even listening to me anymore. Huh? Yeah. Uh, huh. <laughs> the other thing I was, uh, the last thing I was going to say was, um, it's, it seemed like he did some cup, cupping vocals on this, on this album. Am I correct? Am I hearing that correctly? Um, yeah. I mean, that's what it okay. sounds like to me. That's what I was um, thinking. It's a little more of like, like a made echo rather than like you know an effect. Yeah. All right. Cool. As two thousands, open your mouth for the speechless. In case of those appointed to die, Vadim Tiver on guitar would be replaced by Robert Carpenter on guitar, and that takes us right into two thousand and one's the fourth plague flies ep from robotic empire produced once again by vincent ratty this is the last album for richard arnold on bass and tj de blois on drums de blois de blois de blois de blois chris graham like of exclaim wrote in his review of the album there's much to like and even more potential contained on the five sonic barbs of the fourth plague flies like many in the underground seeking a new twist of metallic hardcore's myriad incarnations a life once lost have turned the brutality of black metal and the precision of technical death grind to establish their identity brutal death slash thrash runs collide yeah runs collide with uh buffeting metallic chugging insane dillinger ish runs dillinger i say good call good call uh themselves stolen from the lines uh or from the likes of atheist and cynic uh, cynic and death semi-melodic harmonized breaks and an overwhelmingly abrasive attack that doesn't relent for the duration of this ep however As brutal and punishing as this disc is, with a better production and more time on the performance, it could have been truly obliterating as the mix gets a little thin at times and doesn't deliver the excessive sonic pummeling a life once lost strives for. Still, while the fourth plague flies as more death and thrash than hardcore, it will appeal to any fan of aggression, and their next release has the potential to be absolutely brutal. Nice. Couldn't even hear you, but that's all right. I don't know if it was on mute or not, or if it just... Brutal. Okay, I was just thinking they couldn't pick it up, because it was too brutal. It was too brutal. Songs on this EP include uh, Chaleb. I think that's how I'm saying it. Chaleb, uh, Our Second Home, The Dead Sea, Prepare Yourself for What Is About to Come, and The Tide. I'm just going to go ahead and say that it's a good EP. There was a couple of songs. I think it, oh no, it's here. I think it's the last three The Dead Sea, Prepare Yourself for What Is About to Come, and The Tide that were like extra demo tracks that were on the 2004 reissue of their debut album. Um, I personally like those better than these three versions right here on this EP. Okay. I don't, I mean, I, I'm sure you didn't get to listen to that. I was listening to mine on YouTube, um, but then they were attached to that playlist. Um, the Dead Sea I, version is live though. Is it the Dead Sea? I thought it was the tide that was alive. Is it the Dead Sea? It's yeah, um, but here's that here's such bad it. quality. It doesn't. Are you listening to it? Yeah, the tide and prepare yourself for what's about to come are the demo versions, and then the Dead yeah, Sea but, is the live version. And you're listening to the Dead Sea, right? I was. Oh, okay. I turned it I, off. See, I didn't feel like to me it didn't feel like a live version. I don't know. Maybe it was just the I don't know. Like you can anyway. tell it's like 
I don't know. It's, it's I mean, weird. it doesn't it doesn't sound like it's like one hundred percent studio quality. I just felt like it was more demo sounding than like. I mean, I hear no crowd. I don't hear anything like that. So it's like, are you saying it's in? Are they saying it's like just recorded live in the studio or? Yeah, I don't know. You know, maybe. I mean, anyway, let's let's get off of that. Let's get back to this EP, Josh. What did you think of the Fourth Plague Flies EP? It's starting to flesh out a little bit more. Okay. Um, I'm starting to feel that sound that they're working towards um, that you really start to see in a great artist. And then by the time we get to Hunter, yeah, it's it's full fledged. Full blown, man. Full blown. Uh, yeah. I think our second home, The Dead Sea, are probably my favorite tracks on this one. Okay. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one overall, man. Front to back, back to front. Let us move on, Josh, to bigger and better things. Richard Arnold on bass would be replaced by Nick Frasca. TJ DeBlois would be replaced by Justin Graves on drums. The band would take a step up by signing with Death. Even a band with as little to talk about (laughs) as this band is going to have like a thousand lineup changes. That's pretty sad. Over the course of just a couple years. It's pretty sad. Uh, yeah, the band is saying goodbye to Robotic Empire uh, le- ra- label and are signing with Death Wish Records to present. I present to you, Josh, the sophomore album, 2003's A Great Artist, produced by Andrew Frankel, Kurt Morris from allmusic.com, wrote in his review of the album, a life once lost debut for Death Wish, finds the band taking what it presented with its first album on Robotic Empire and installing more double bass drum and thick mm, guitar sound, while taking some of the fast-paced music and instead making... Yeah, while taking out, taking out some of the fast-paced music and instead making the songs more chunky ugh, and dense. Stuff. Yeah. Uh, the vocals are death metal growls, both in a high and low-end range. And yes, there are occasional guitar solos too. The downside is that none of, these, none of this seems entirely fierce or interesting as much as it just is an assault on the ears. Uh, uh, there is some variation, but for the most part, this would sound all the same, even to the nominal, no, nominal uh, death metal fan. The band certainly has some talent, but some diversity within the album would have been nice. I don't know what you're talking about, buddy. I love this album. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't. Uh, why? Why the diversity? They're finding the formula. We don't need diversity. Keep the things the way they were. Take yeah. tradition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Songs on this album include Surreal, Atrocities, Cavill, uh, The Change Came Suddenly, Nevermore Will I Have an Understanding in Anything Under the Sun, Maudlin, Pious, The Wicked Will Rot, and The Finale Overwhelming. Kind of like what we talked about earlier, Josh, I me personally, I feel like this is the album where Robert found his his voice, his vocal style, and it suits him, and it suits the band, and therefore, it suits me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, and I agree with the uh, with the um, reviewer saying talking about it's an assault on the ears because I wrote my uh, notes here heavy, heavy, and heavy because it is heavy. It's beautiful. I did have a question for you. And we can talk about this, not just about this album, but just like overall his vocal style throughout the years. It's weird. It's like it's no, it's not weird. It's just like interesting to me, like how he does that, how he hits some of those. No, I mean, I, I don't know, man. Just don't know. There's times where and I know it's not. I know 100 percent it's not. But there's times I'm like, man, is he like inwardly screaming? Because, like, it just sounds thro- so throaty at times, you know? Yeah. But I was wondering if you could kind of, like, give me a little description of, like, his vocal style and how he does it. It sounds, like, bitey. Like, okay. I agree. Yeah. There are That's times a good when it sounds like 
they could be inhales, but you can no like, way, though, yeah, man. you can hear him like breathing through a lot of it, you know? So, right. um, yeah, I would say kind of bitey, like just more like you've kind of got your teeth, like more, I think it's kind of, you know, like what you're seeing behind you. Yeah. You got your teeth a lot more together. Um, and especially like, cause I'm listening to, I'm listening to it now. I was listening to surreal atrocities and it's, um, Cavill now. Um, yeah, a lot of it is not even like throaty. It's very just like pushed, you know? Yeah. And it's relying on a lot of saliva, I feel like, to just even kind of make mm. that sound that gritty, you know? Yeah. He I mean, he's got the voice for it. He 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 found it. He figured it out. I mean, I don't know. Well, I mean, he kind of does sound like Randy from Lamb of God at times. There's, at times. there's that kind of yeah. I mean, once once you real like once you get to Iron Gag, it's like yeah, you really. Well, it's, so it's funny because like I never realized that Randy did guest vocals on Vulture off mm. of Hunter, and so I always just assumed it was Robert doing that, and then I realized and that it was listening this time through, and I'm like. Dang, they kind of do sound the same there a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I I would agree with what you're saying. I mean, they can replicate each other's styles pretty well. Yeah. Um, You you mentioned it earlier before we got started about his lyrics and then the way he delivers those lyrics and the the cadences that he puts with it to uh, to the music. And it's it's very interesting how he can do that. Now they figured out to do that, too. Um, Because what did you say? Just like just reading it out loud. It's like, eh, it just doesn't have that same oomph to it, you know? Yeah, they're not the best lyrics, but because of the cadences. That's the biggest thing that makes them really work. Yeah, it makes them work. So Okay, so what do you think? Because I've talked enough. What do you think about uh, their sophomore album, Josh? A great artist. Um, This one one, uh, works for me. They... I really like, well, there's one thing about me, you know, talked about it with Zayo, but this is a band that has pretty good album artwork all the way around. Yes. Yeah. Uh, That's some great album artwork on this one, man. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Cameron had, I don't remember if he had this t-shirt or if he had a different one. I think it was this one, but I always thought it was the coolest shirt. Um, But yeah, this is where, we start checking all the boxes for a life once lost for me. We start finding that vocal sound um, that stays. We start finding that guitar sound that stays and we start finding that drum drive that really stays. Yeah. Um, I feel like we were kind of playing around before trying to figure out where we were going to go. This fast paced thrash says, just didn't work for them, man. Yeah. And this album to me says we're going this direction now. Like yeah. this is where we're taking this. It's a whole album just like this. Like he was saying, oh, it would have been nice to see a little bit of change. Like, no, this is <laughs> what we're sticking with from here on out. <laughs> uh, and no. then we'll hold to that like through the rest of their albums. They're not going to do yeah. a bunch of like, oh, let's throw a slow song on there or anything like that. It's going to every song is going to sound exactly like this different versions of this for however many tracks. I feel like mainly the only thing that really changes from here on out is his vocal style just a little bit. Once you get to like iron gag. And then I feel like definitely once you hit, was it as as ecstatic trance? Is that the final album's name? Yeah. Yeah. It feels like he's more, I don't really have a description of it, but it just sounds a little bit different. There's a little more uh, in yeah, there. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, That's he throws in some it. like lower tones kind of with what he's already doing. Yeah. That kind of gives that punch a feel, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, I like the middle of the album here when it, the two songs uh, that definitely blend together musically, 
Um, and with the uh, song titles, Nevermore Will I Have an Understanding in Anything Under the Sun. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. And yeah, it just it comes in so heavy with surreal atrocities, man. It's it's a good, it's a great sophomore album. So anything else, Josh, on a great artist? Um no, I don't think so. I would say uh even though Hunter, you know, is you probably think that would be like my entry point album. I would say no, great I, artist or hunter are both kind of there too. I was gonna say me. I was gonna say a great artist. Start with that one, man. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. So yeah, but you know I always try to go with where I think people I know, will actually I know. find some interest, not just what I think is a great <laughs> early no, album for them, i mean yeah. but you know how i am my opinion is gold and everybody should follow it and you know in the story of course <laughs> because you people don't know what you're doing you need me in your life yes i uh, guess how many monthly listeners our boys have well i was gonna ask you once we got to hunter here because that's really where we start kind of getting I mean, that's their landmark album, right? Yeah. That's their album that they're most well known for. So, what are we talking Spotify wise overall? Um, well, seven thousand four hundred and sixty-five monthly <laughs> listeners. So, well, you have to think again. It's like yeah. when was Spotify really introduced? You know, and this band dipped out in two thousand and thirteen. So, I mean, you know, and they never really was that like really popular band, even at even in like, you know, their heyday of Hunter, yeah. you know, so. There's a reason what, this isn't a band anymore. Yeah. So uh, number numbers wise on like albums, though, do they, do they have, um, do you have those numbers? So fourth plague, none of them break. Uh, none of well, there's like an 8000 on here and none of them are over that. Okay. Um. Open your mouth for the speechless. About the same, like three okay. and four thousand for most of them. Okay. Um, for great artists, it does get a bump. We've got some twenty thirties, a sixty, a one twenty six. Um, for Hunter, um, Vulture's got you know, and probably because. Um, what's his face is featured on there. Yeah. Uh, but it's got almost a million plays. Um, after that, it kind of drops off 40, 50, 60,000, 180,000. Iron gag is even less than Hunter was. An ecstatic trance, kind of about the same 20s, 30s. Yeah, so it's not this, it's just not really a big popular band. Yeah, this one's a secret gem, you know. That's why we're telling you people about it. We want the secret to be out there. That's what we're here for. <laughs> so with their uh, success from their sophomore album, the band will catch the eye of one Ferret Records, Josh, bringing us 2005's Hunter album. Produced by Rob Caggiano and Eddie Wool, this album peaked at number twenty-eight on the Billboard's Top Heat Seekers chart. That's not bad. And del- yeah, not bad at all. I believe that was the only album that topped on on anything, <laughs> had any recognition at all. Uh, a deluxe edition would be released in two thousand and six, which would include a bonus DVD of music videos from this album. Doug Moore reviewed the album saying, quote, probably the most frustrating thing about this album is the exceptionally exceptional quality on display in its high points. The already well circulated Needleman, for example, is a crushing summation of modern heavy metals strong points. It's catchier than Ebola chorus pummeling stop start riffage and stratospheric leads run together into a dense ball of uh, articulate and memorable fury a life once lost seems to have largely outgrown the the mashuga jocking of a great artist and their influences now include such such disparate modern uh, luminaries as burnt by the sun and lamb of god the viciously anthemic vulture contains elements of both 
with the uh, cement thick dissonance of the former and the overdriven twang and vocals uh, of the latter. In fact, the more varied songs on this album are by and large the best as the newly diverse riffs of guitarist Douglas Sebelik and Robert Carpenter mesh well with the rhythm section's familiar disorienting grooves. Drummer Justin Graves turns in the standout technical performance of the, of the album. His skinmanship is complex, but tasteful and controlled, and his kick drum dexterity has few equals in, in this era of over-the-top blasters. Unfortunately, for all of the progress A Life Once Lost has made, they still haven't quite nailed this one. Most notably, the specter of the trance-inducing repetition and dryness that plagued a great artist is still lurking about. The monotone stomp of ghosting and the rubber bandism of grotesque will have listeners staring off into space. <laughs> <laughs> and reaching unconsciously for their copies of Destroy, Erase, Improve. That said, the problem is not nearly as severe as it was on the aforementioned release, and Hunter's more varied tempos and notably less dehydrated Rob Caggiano production make for a much more listenable experience. As good as this record is, and it is quite good, it's hard for me to really cut a life once lost to slack they arguably, arguably deserve. Even now, the explosive but unfocused energy of their first two releases and the much maligned but nonetheless intense AGA sound like the products of a band inches away from real importance in the current American metal scene, and Hunter only solidifies the impression. Ultimately, though, the album's that's the album's problem. It's just not as good as it should be. Scads of metal fans will enjoy this for what it is, but for me, I'm going to hold out for that immense album that A Life Once Lost has on the tip of their tongue but hasn't quite managed to spit out. Buddy, I think you'd have to wait forever. <laughs> I mean, not no offense to like the last two albums because I liked Iron Gag and... and uh, ecstatic trance but i mean i don't know what this guy wants man you know yeah i mean it I mean, doesn't get better Hunter's a good album yeah you know so uh songs on this album include rehashed needleman vulture featuring randy blythe of lamb of god pain and panic hunter grotesque sly a rush and siege i give in ghosting and the finale with pitiless blows Let's see here, Josh. The only note I had was this is their most known slash successful album. Go, Josh. What'd you think of Hunter? Oh, good. <laughs> um, I think Hunter is my favorite album. Um, I remember the first time I heard them do Vulture Live, I was just blown away. So that that really solidified uh, it for me. I've seen many bands like cover that song. Uh, really? Sets, okay. So really, yeah. Like who? That's always pretty sweet. Um, as much as the sound was on a great artist, this is where we really start to feel that. I like how he described it, like kind of rubber bandy. Mm -hmm. um sound it like with the way the riffs are and the way everything's played it's there's a lot of bends it's all played like very staccato um, and you feel a lot of times like you're being jerked like kind of back and forth back and forth back and forth um this is like that perfectly cultivated um a life once lost sound you know like this yeah. this is it <laughs> um i've got it <laughs> yeah when i when i think of a life once lost it is this album because that's yes. oh yeah in my head like when they that uh, album 100 percent solidified that yeah yeah that's uh, I, every time i think of a, a life once lost i always think of the artwork for hunter it's the first thing that comes to my mind and vulture but yeah that's yeah, yeah. It's all there. The the guitar riffs and rehashed. Um the the drums just throughout this whole album are so good. 
What kind um, of tuning are we? What? What kind of tuning are we are we uh, hearing here on this album? Probably drop D. Uh, let me double check on that. That's that's one of the things I always liked about Life Ones Lost too was they had really good like sound off of their guitars. Yeah. Very like, mm, yeah. Kind of southern also too, man. Nice little southern twang to it, Lil. But yeah, I thought maybe you might know. Uh you seem to kind of be the expert on that on this show. Because I couldn't tell you. <laughs> yeah, drop D. Um, okay. at least in this album. Uh okay. mostly gonna be drop D. Okay. What are we thinking on the other albums though? Um, I mean, I would guess it's not too dissimilar, so I would guess it's D, maybe B, or okay. D, or maybe A. Okay. Um, I can grab another track here real quick. I mean, it looks like most of the like tabs and stuff that are available for them are off of, um, Hunter, the great artist, and Hunter. Oh, really? okay. Um, okay. great artist is also drop D. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm seeing mostly drop D here. Okay. There might be a couple variations, but I doubt it. Yeah, I definitely feel like, you know, what I just realized, actually, I'm going to stop my thought here. I just realized you still have your, your, uh, what'd you listen to albums still up behind you there? Oh man. Classic. <laughs> Classic. That's how good they are, man. That's how they go. You didn't even have one, did you? Because you just no, I didn't because I was in yeah. a podcast. Okay. I just had this well, guy, this homeless guy behind me here. <laughs> just in time for the end, we'll get this thrown up here. There you go, just in time. Oh, he's looking right at you. I didn't realize that. Hmm. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> uh, yeah, kind of like what we talked about earlier. You know, I feel like great artists. He's he found his style vocally. Um, they figure some things out musically, and and this is where they've really hit their high here. They've, I don't want to say their peak because that makes it sound like after this they just fall off because that's not what it is. But I mean, I feel like this is where they really hit the hit the nail on the head, um, and it all came together. God, have his you vocals seen, are so good, man. <laughs> have you seen the video for Vulture? Yeah, it's. I watched <laughs> a little bit of it this last week, but it, it had been forever before that, but. It's so weird. Yeah. The guy's like all crazy and he like jumps <gasps> off that building, like crazy. He's a vulture. He thinks he's a vulture. <laughs> <laughs> <Rawr>. <laughs> and anything else on 2005's Hunter album, Josh? No, I mean, I think this is my most accessible album. Entry point. Um, if an album is going to sell you on a life once lost, it's going to be this one. So. <laughs> There is no hope um, otherwise. <laughs> favorite tracks on this one probably rehashed. Um Vulture, Pain and Panic. Um Yeah, Ghosting, Pitiless Blows. Pitiless Blows has that great bit towards the end. It's like the banana na 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 dun 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 na 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 great yeah. riff. So good, so good. Some people are saying it's the best, the best riff. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's move on. <laughs> a lot of people are saying that. A lot of people are saying it's the best. Is this supposed to be Trump? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Huge. This album was huge. It's a huge album. <laughs> All right, uh, success from their third full-length album saw the band tour with bands such as Zayo. Hey, we just talked about those guys. Nice. Uh, as they lay dying, thrown or throw down, thrown down, throw, throw down, down. Nice. Uh, clutch, and some band called Lamb of God. I'm not really sure who they are, huh. uh, and many more. <laughs> they probably didn't make it very far. Nah, they probably didn't make it very far. Uh, the band even saw an opportunity. How do you to... how do you feel about Lamb of God? I haven't listened to a whole lot of them. That's the other thing too. Um, I mean, I like what I've heard. I like. Um, it's been quite a while since I listened to them. Um, that's one that we need to put on the list though to do. Um, I mean, I don't hate them or anything. 
Don't do yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, the band even saw an opportunity to play Oz Fest 2006. Thank you, Ozzy. Uh, yeah, that thanks, leads us Oz right. Fest. <laughs> Do what? I said thanks, Oz Fest. No, oh. that leads us right into 2007's Iron Gag from Ferret Records, produced by Eric Rachel. If that name sounds familiar, he did a bunch of work with uh, Zayo on some of their albums. So Iron Gag's got to be good, right? 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 Right. I mean, what did you think? <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> yeah, I like Iron Gag. I there were several points listening to it where I thought this could be this could be a mailing album. Like not necessarily the vocals, like if you threw Dallas Taylor over it, but there's some parts where I'm like, okay, this is very southern sounding. More like a little more southern sounding than okay. their previous albums. Okay. I hadn't listened to this one until we were doing this episode. And so, of course, you know, like I said earlier, when I think of Life One's Loss, I think of Hunter, uh, the album Hunter and the album artwork. And so, and I knew they weren't around anymore. I knew they had disbanded in, you know, 2013. And so when I was going through the notes and trying to get ready. I remember looking at this album and looking at the album artwork and I thought, Ugh. I don't know, man, for some reason, I mean, for some reason, this album artwork just gives me bad vibes. And I'm thinking, I- I'm, I'm not going to like this album, am I? And then I was wrong. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, it very kind of, much. It is odd. Yeah, it just seems like it's like out of the norm of like what we've gotten so far artwork wise from a life once lost. And so I don't know, to me, it almost I like I look at it and I think, oh, no, have they changed up their music? You know, it kind of yeah. it kind of throws that vibe at me. And I'm like, ah, boy. Um, And they really haven't. I don't think Um, I'm, I'm with you on the vocals. It's like he starts to sound more like Randy from. Lamb of God, but I mean, I, I like the album. I had no problem with it at all. It, uh, this I, is good. I encourage you to listen to just a couple of tracks off this with that mindset that I was talking of about. The of like, of I could see one? musically like this being like Firewater have... Joyride, dude. Okay. Just right from okay. the get go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, one of my favorite A Life Once Lost tracks is on this album, though. Can you Can guess, guess which it? one it is? Okay. Josh. Josh. Josh is a man of, of great tastes. He likes money and ice cream. Let's see. Let's oh, my see. God. But the question is, does he like meth? Hmm. What the fuck? <laughs> well, meth mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it meth mouth? <laughs> no. Is it all teeth? It is all teeth. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Featuring a little uh, Anthony Green from Circus Survive? Hmm? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, Very and... interesting. <laughs> yeah, but I like it. Like it, it plays. Yeah, it, plays. it does. Just, um, I remember then, seeing that the first time I was like, okay. It's like after <laughs> that, towards the end, there's the riff where they're alternating between, it's like they're doing all um down strums and then the next time around it's the exact same riff but it's played like both you know yeah so, and it's, so i don't know i can't it's hard it's a hard one to describe i thought about that when i was listening to it i was like how the hell am i going to describe this riff but oh, it's no. just yeah i don't know it's it's a hard one to explain but yeah, it's da 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 So, but yeah, I uh, Iron Gag has it's they're doing the same thing, but it's a little different in places. Like they're throwing some bigger breakdowns at you in here than I feel like you got in. Uh, Hunter. <laughs> yeah, Hunter. Um, you're getting some. Is this more seriously defined... what you're trying to think of? 
Yeah, I don't know why. I was just sitting here and like Vulture was the only thing in my head. It was just Vulture. Oh my god. <laughs> um but yeah, well, it's, let uh, me let me ask you this because, and I think it, they may say it here in this in this review that I'll I'll read here in just a moment. But I did see, like Wikipedia puts it under a genre of like groove metal, and a lot of people were kind of talking about it. Kind of gets kind of groovy, groovy, bro, groovy. Do you feel some groove metal in there? Maybe just with like kind of the timing i don't know by the time we get to ecstatic trance i would say that i feel that a little bit more do you like, think it his, almost his... feels like there's Go some ahead. like yeah some either some groove type stuff or like some a little bit of like acid rock um, do you think uh do you think his cadence kind of uh what's the word uh i don't know that it's the <laughs> cadence that lends to it okay okay no i, th- I think it's musically i just think of the okay. way like it's driven. well I, yeah I, i'm 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 saying your foundation there is the music i'm just saying do you think the cadence pushes it more that way also that was mm, yeah i don't know way, if I bad way to describe that. it i don't think i'm getting out what i'm trying to what i'm thinking Anyway, uh, yeah, last album for bassist Nick Frosca and Josh. Let's see what old old Ryan Ogle of Lamb Goat uh, wrote here in his review on the album. Quote: When are some of these bands, or more importantly, record labels, going to learn that their target audience can tell the difference between paying tribute to an influence and blatantly thievery? Sure, the fly-by-night flavor of the week Hot Topic fans are going to suckle from whatever rebellious-looking teat you put in front of their hungry little mouths. (laughs) But the true fans, the ones who have been bleeding, sweating, and spending spending all over this scene for decades deserve something with, mm, substance. That being said, the latest Slabo tunes from A Life Once Lost, Iron Gag, does show that these five cats from Philly do know how to throw down in that tough guy, crushing, slightly southern fried American metal sense of the word, tracks like Detest, which features a solo courtesy of Devin Townsend and Firewater Joyside, also prove that these dudes have listened to the last Lamb of God record a lot. Go ahead. I Uh-oh. I don't know. I Uh-oh. I, I was I at first some I was like, okay, <laughs> I like the how we said, yeah, there is that southern feeling to it cuz that made me kind of feel a little justified. Um, but I don't know. I feel like he's really hating on this album for no reason. Uh, is he hating on it though? Because I feel like I felt like at first, like he was going to, and then all of a sudden he kind of turned around. And he was like, uh, "The latest Slavo tunes from a life once lost." Iron Gag does show that these five cats from Philly do know how to throw down, and that tough guy, crushing slightly southern fried American middle sense of the word of the word tracks like Detest, which featured da 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 da, uh, and Fire Firewater Joyride. Yeah, fire water joyride. I keep wanting to say fireside water joyride. I don't know why. Fire water joyride. Fire water joyride also proved that these dudes have listened to the last Lamb of God record a lot. I don't know. I it's I don't know. I kind of get the sense that he's like praising them, but then at the same time, there's kind of like a backhanded compliment almost. It doesn't feel like it. No. Okay. Let me finish up here. While this comparison makes sense when you consider that Lamb of God vocalist Randy Blythe lent his knowledge to the disc in the form of vocal producer and guest vocals on the standout pigeonhole, that doesn't forgive uh, a lull. That's the one thing I forgot to do was uh, kind of like I Wabo. I wrestled a bear once. Uh, our acronym here for a life once lost is a lull. Hello. Hello. 
uh, a lull for borrowing more than a few cups of sugar from their neighbor. The few times where the band does step outside the box and do their own thing, such as worship, I hear potential for a formidable force in today's scene. While other moments, the Wanderer and All Teeth come across as contrived and fail to deliver much excitement. Songs on this album include Fire, Water, Joyride, Detest featuring Devin Townsend of Strapping on the Lad, The Wanderer, Worship, All Teeth featuring Anthony Green of Circus Survive, Meth Mouth, Masks, Pigeon Hold featuring Randy Blythe of Lamb of God, Others Die, Silence, and the finale, Ill Will. Uh, one thing I did want to say, because we did cover some stuff from my notes already, um, but the last thing I had wrote down here, I want to kind of run it by you and see what you thought. So the beginning of the song, The Wanderer, are you familiar? Are you familiar with the beginning of the song, The Wanderer? Am I familiar? Uh, not right off the top of my head. Okay. See. It's kind of got the, it's kind of got like the drum intro. It's kind of slow. Yep. Okay. 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 Is there anything that comes to mind? Because the thing right that, off the top, man. So the thing that comes to my mind is he is legend song Collins on Few. Okay. And it kind of makes me feel like they're kind of going for a vibe like that. I like The Wonder. It's a good song. Um, I like this album. It's a good album. Um, yeah, I just, I just kind of wanted to throw that by you, see if you'd thought that too or not but no i hadn't i mean it hadn't jumped out to me so definitely yeah. good catch there but i could also see you know he is legend having heard this album um it would have yeah, been in the are. same circles so yeah yeah true 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 anything oh, else God, on, it goes uh, so hard after that the way like, i know right he kicks up yeah that's <laughs> the that's the difference though between collins and uh the wanderer though does Collins yeah. kind of Collins waits never for, kicks up. Collins uh Collins waits for Easter and Locust to come in before it finally kicks in because yeah. it has that same you know riff or whatever basically but uh yeah anything else on Iron Gag Josh I don't think so let's right, uh man. let's hit this last one let's do this last one Josh uh, before we do with Nick Frasca on bass departing the band. Uh, the uh, the band would turn to Mike Sebelik on bass to fill in uh, for the time being. The release of their fourth full-length album saw the band go abroad, touring such places as Europe, Russia, and even Alaska. Ooh. In 2011, Justin Graves, the drummer, would leave the band and be replaced by Jordan Krauss on drums, while Robert Carpenter on guitar would depart leaving the band without a second guitarist so at this point we're down to uh four members um one guitarist one bassist one bassist well, we've got one guitarist That's three bassists five drummers and no vocalists yeah uh no what just one guitarist uh the vocalist bassist and drummer now with their contract done with Ferret Records, the band would sign with a new label to release their fifth album. Have you ever heard of Season of Mist Records? No. Well, let me introduce you, Josh, to Season of Mist Records, 2012's Ecstatic Trance. Ooh. Produced by Andreas Magnuson, it is the only album for Jordan Krauss on drums and Mike Sabalik on bass. In a review of the album, quote, A Life Once Lost are certainly not the first band to understand and appreciate the hypnotic element that lies underneath the fury and power of heavy music. Because all too often we focus on the volume and brute force of metalcore and black metal without acknowledging how affecting it is to have the same riff, so, riffs cycled over again and again. It wraps you up tighter within the song, giving it a much more powerful impact. But by tilting their sixth album, Ecstatic Trance, the Pennsylvania-based quartet put the emphasis on the rapturous elements of this new collection. It's the least showy metal record you're likely to come across this year. That's, Drummer Jordan. Yeah, that's, that was well yeah. said. 
drummer Jordan Krause and bassist Mike Savalik spin their spin these 10 songs locked into steady, unflinching grooves, relatively free of fills and frills. Fills and frills. Ooh, I like that. Uh, and Douglas Savalik handling all guitar parts on the album for the first time, follow suit, circling around. Uh, trudging and furious rhythm lines even when he tails off to do a solo savlik manages to sound downright understand understated excuse me just check out how he slinks uh, his lead part into gnawing lisp eventually leading into another cycling pattern the way the album then resides on singer robert meadows shoulders thankfully he is more than up to the task his t- intense performance throughout it throughout is what's oh okay his intense performance throughout is what stings and bleeds you as you're spinning around under the influence of the rest of the album's attack madness is god is a prime example of this as meadows tears into lines like you will now suffer and i will show you that nothing matters more than death itself (laughs) with gleaming fangs Uh, It's hard to know sometimes whether he's crying out to the heavens or just screaming into a mirror. Either way, the effect, as with the rest of this amazing album, is powerful and soul-shattering. I'd like to add, uh, when he said screaming out to the heavens or just screaming into a mirror, I'd like to add screaming into a pillow. (gasps) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Songs on this album include Something Awful, Gnawing Lisp, Madness is God, Miracle Worker, Empty Form, I Am, The Blues, People Stare, I See, I Hear, and the finale, the final song released by A Life Once Lost, I Sit Ill. For a final album, Josh, I mean, I don't know. I I don't know your listening experience, if you were still listening to them up at this point. Um how did they do i was still listening up until this point and what, i was what did you still, think at the time yeah i was still satisfied with the album when it came out mm. um i don't put it on very often because overall it's just kind of underwhelming um it's just more of the same and they didn't really I don't know. I I could see where we're kind of getting into a weird like trance metal thing because it's just kind of the same thing over and over and over and over and over and not a whole lot of variation. There's a lot of one of the things I picked up was like there's a lot of like get like little guitar solos like behind the vocals, you know, instead of just like, oh, you know, here's the vocals and all of a sudden the vocals stop and here's a guitar solo. You know, it's like they're kind of like layered over each other. And I think that kind of contributes to the trance uh, metal. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I I hate to say that one of my favorite songs on the album is Asteroid, which is the cover song. The cover song. <laughs> um, yeah, that's yeah. a cover by a band called The Killing Joke. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. The cover goes really hard. It's a really but, nice cover, yeah. It's a good album cover. The rest of the album, yeah, it's just kind of underwhelming, especially in comparison to the three before it, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's probably sweet one run, of though, up. of those three albums, though, where they really have that sound. Yeah. Um, I mean, eventually I guess sometimes it's you just like, kind of... Okay, well, what do you, you know? Yeah, like, what more can we do? Yeah. Especially if you don't want to change and you don't want to, like... Per- I don't want to say progress, but like, I mean, just try something different. I mean, yeah, you're just just kind of stuck there. You know, and it's not a it's not a bad album. It's just no, you know, it just is just kind of there, pop, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. The one thing I was going to say about the vocal style to me, um, so it make when I listen to it, it makes me the way he's changed it up on this one compared to the last ones. It makes me think of the comparison I'm I'm putting up is um it's to speak of wolves when we did you know when we did that episode it's mm. their album uh, myself letting go uh, the vocalist that did that album it, it makes me think of that kind of style 
Um, and I, I don't know, I can't really describe it. Uh, but if you know who I'm talking about, uh, people are listening or watching or Josh. <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> if you know, you know. You're just that much. No, closer not to really. Me. That I mean, that band was kind of forgettable to me. Yeah. So, well, and I personally, I mean, like, I like that album from To Speak of Wolves. That was the only one that I liked from To Speak of Wolves. Um, and I liked that vocalist that they had at that time. He kind of gave me like a Treyu vibes, kind of their okay. vocal style a little bit, but not like more like like screaming though. But anyway, I'm going down a rabbit hole now uh yeah it's i'm I'm with you on this album it's not a bad one it's a good one but it it doesn't pop it it's just it's just there it's there sitting in the corner of the room yeah it's the awkward kid in the party just hanging out in the corner you know <laughs> so i don't hate them i just don't know them that well yeah yeah cool all right touring proceeded in support of the new album Josh, just nine months later after the album was released, the band would announce their breakup. In an interview with Lamb Goat, frontman Robert Meadows spoke on the band's breakup saying, quote, I feel like I need to step back a little bit from that to just better myself as a person. I just felt like I wasn't really able to handle that aspect of being in a band or that commitment. I really had to put so many things aside. I'm 33, year, 33 years old now, and I feel like my life has been on hold since I was 19. Uh, I'm not complaining about where it's taken me. It's been pretty awesome. I've been able to put out you know, six records, film videos, see countries I would have never seen before, and I've taken a band further than a lot of people have in their lifetime. Uh, you know, It's a lot of fun, and it feels really rewarding. In that same interview, uh, Meadows commented on the challenge of the next chapter in his life, saying, quote, it's not easy to talk about because it's still so fresh. You do something for such a long time, it ends, and you're just kind of like, shit, what now? Uh, it's wild. Ending it to me is like being released from prison. I have to step out into the world and find myself again. All I knew was getting in a van, sleeping on floors, and playing shows at uh, at bars for 14 years. But at the same time, I wouldn't have changed anything. While I was on the road, all of my friends were going to school, becoming teachers and doctors, having kids, all of that. I'm really envious, but the stories I have are pretty awesome. It's really hard uh, to not do something that you you've trained yourself to do for so long it's hard to break habits like that in the era josh currently that we're living in uh in the era of bands quote returning and i put in parentheses at varying degrees and what i mean by that is i don't want to see a band like mainly come back give me a single and then a year later i have no clue what they're going to do are they still a band are they going to put out an album or what, you know, whereas a band like the last band we talked about, Symphony in Peril, put out two albums in the mid 2000s. They went away. They came back just this last year. And hey, we're about to get a new album this next year, you know, so it's kind of like these bands are kind of like there's this trend right now going on of like some of these bands from when we we're in high school that are disbanded coming back and like playing shows and sometimes just playing shows or sometimes playing shows and releasing albums. Uh, but anyway, in that era that we were living in currently, uh, fans of the of the band uh, had to wonder if a life once lost would make a comeback. Well, the idea of... Um... Where are you going to say? No. Okay. I don't know what I did here in my notes. It was kind of weird. The idea, that idea, was destroyed. 10 years after the breakup as former frontman uh, Robert Meadows tweeted just this past year, quote, sorry guys, a lull will never play again. End quote. Sign seal delivered. It's over. It's done. It's finito. Finish. Close the curtain. Turn out the lights. Lock the door behind you. Burn it down. Burn it down and walk away, Josh. Burn it down I respect the move. Like I respect yeah, the move. I mean, just go ahead and say. It. I mean, like we're I guess not better gonna, than just be like, eh. yeah, we're not going to come back. Just try to cash in who, on. Who knows if we're back? You know, a little bit of hype. Yeah, yeah. So no, I like it. 
In the time since a life once lost breakup, Meadows joined metalcore slash deathcore band Left to Vanish in 2017, while also while also starting the band, uh, the metal slash hardcore band Mind Power. Josh, final thoughts on the band A Life Once Lost before we get out of here. I think they're one of those great little gem bands, you know? Um, yeah. It's, uh, you're only, you know, you're only going to get like three great albums out of this, but, you know, Cherish it'll it. be one of those bands that uh, you can pull out when you're trying to look like you know what you're talking about and nobody will have heard of them so it'll be all the better for it your ego will feel better yeah no i i love a life once lost those three albums are really you know they're not as heavy in the rotation these days but they're uh they're still some of my favorites from back in the day for sure yeah all right let's get on out of here josh Make sure to follow us on Twitter at is survived by pro for news in the latest episode postings, not just on this show, but our other shows as well. We have the history of the core's after hours podcast, where I sit down with my good friend and avid listener of this very podcast right here, Eric. When we talk about some of the bands me and Josh have already talked about, I uh, got a couple of brand new episodes coming out, uh, not this week, but starting the week after um the next two episodes are about alexis on fire and comeback kids so be on the lookout for those two uh, we also have the red right hand podcast which has covered all six seasons and then some of the peaky blinders uh, and we also have the throne of the dragon podcast which so far has covered season one of house of the dragon soon to be season two of house of the dragon uh, so be on the lookout for more episodes from that podcast as well also, while you're on Twitter, make sure to follow my co-host at Joshua Lingari. It's right there. It's right there. It's right below him. Whoa, there it is. Uh, make sure to leave us a five-star review. That way, yeah, I did that, right? I'm oh, my co-host at Joshua Lingari. Okay, on Twitter, yeah. Make sure to leave <laughs> us a five-star. Well, I couldn't remember if I said your handle. I mean, I know it's right there, but still. Uh, make sure to leave us a five-star review and write us a comment on YouTube or whatever podcast service you're using if you want to listen to us see our smiling faces head on over to our youtube page just search for is survived by productions and that'll have every episode from all of our shows subscribe to the channel thumbs up the video all right till next time we'll see you